Good afternoon. My name is Bill Mullen with Agronomist with Seed Consultants. Uh, we're out here uh, at a customer's farm in Johnson County, just southwest of Franklin, Indiana. We're out here in a cornfield here today just to look at some things as far as what's going on out there <clears throat> and as far as to keep in mind uh, the urgency possibly of trying to go ahead and get started on some of our problem fields. Um, right now there's a lot of people that are shelling corn as far north as Angola, Indiana, <clears throat> down to Kokomo, Terre Haute, Indiana, all the way down to Cordon, Indiana, even up in this area around uh, Franklin, Indiana. The big thing about it is because of the quality of the stocks and some issues out there. All right, as I walked into this cornfield here, uh, as you can see, it's got some height with it. There have been some issues with some drought conditions as far as getting some nubbin ears out there because of that moisture stress, lack of moisture, and the high heat after pollination. Uh, the other thing we're seeing here uh, as I walked into the field is dropped ears, all right, which right now in many fields we're seeing European corn borer that went into the stock and up into and through the ear shank. And there's some places where the ear shank really didn't develop as good as because of the stress. Those are the fields we really need to keep an eye on because with any heavy winds, those ears probably are gonna, are gonna fall off onto the ground in that, all right. There was anthracnose leaf blight this year, as well as some ear molds and stalk rot. So, you know, it's not a pretty picture out here, but if anything I could try to stress and say is that what's out here, we need to try to take care of. The sooner the better, because this feels like this, there's a good chance they're not gonna make it through in the next three weeks in it because these plants are deteriorating so bad. So I walked through here and there's four plants right here just want to show you. They were pretty much laid over. They're all in a row. We have some compaction issues here, preventing the roots from going down and try to hold it in there. The big thing about this is this is pretty much root lodge. Pretty much the reason why is because of some heavy winds we had here in early middle of the summertime in that. There's other spots in this field where the plants are showing the same thing. The roots did keep the plant growing as much as possible, but it's for, for most of the time, they've gone ahead and starting to fall over in that. So we walk in the fields, we see issues like this, you need to keep in mind that these are some areas here that need to be harvested. This plant here was an ear laying on the ground. I picked it up. You could see where there's a hole that went into the shank and that basically is corn borer penetrated from the stalk, went into the shank and that, and it basically fell to the ground. As you could see, the shank itself is basically deteriorating, a little bit of rot or so in there. She filled out nice, but it was laying on the ground. There's other corns here like this. So, you know, one thing too is, is as I walked through the field, we took a couple where we split them. You know, we look here at the plant. You know, the crown isn't really that bad. It's still somewhat healthy. The pith is real good. However, you know, right here is uh, where first generation corn borer went in. And this, as the corn borer went in, went into the stock, here at the nodes, we could see it starts to deteriorate. You know, it really minimized the nutrients going up to the plant early, you know, and somewhat affected the ear size and that. The big problem right now I'm seeing a lot of these fields is a lot of problems started early with crown rot. Here's a little bit healthier plant, as we could see. The crown really isn't that bad. The roots have been hurt. We do have some compaction in that. But look at the pith. The pith is basically shredded, it's deteriorated, and it's pretty much rotten. It's real soft or so in there. And you know, this had some height to it. The big thing about it is this plant really isn't gonna make it. But we could see down here where the crown is at, how the wet weather did start on it, but not quite as bad as the other plants. The bottom line is, even when we have the issues with the crown rot, and then it's coming up with ears like this. It pollinated, but again, you know, it, we had some issues here with tip back. We have some birds that start feeding on it, all right? But it's a small ear, and a lot of it has to do with the drought as well in that, all right? So I guess the big thing is saying is there's insect issues out here. There's stalk rot issues out here. Uh, been in fields already where there's uh, gibberella, stalk rot. Um, I've also seen some fusarium stalk rot. 
and when these plants here also we saw some ear molds out there as well in that so you know my big thing again here is just trying to say there's a crop out there we want to try to get it harvested as soon as we can there's certain fields out here that are probably not as good standing as other ones we need to get those first come up with your plan here the next week 10 days in that and really start to harvest as long as mother nature allows us to bill mullen the agronomist with seed consultants out here nice fall day um, and just outside of franklin indiana in customers field uh, looking to fill the soybeans you know soybeans this year it just seems like we caught some rains when we really needed it for pod filling time As you can see on this plant here the nodes are close together in that our clusters here you know three four five you know right there six to the node net and there's some of these plants are holding four pod bean four bean pods to them in that so the, the likelihood this year what the stress has hurt for the corn probably hasn't hurt the beans quite as bad in that and i really anticipate our bean yields are going to be as good as last year in some places a little bit better than that as you saw one up here a little bit ago here we have a little nice green friend and that is the uh, green stink bug and the stink bug what i've seen out here in the fields will go ahead and it'll attack the pods and basically cause us some uh, issues as far as the quality of the beans and that beans will shrivel up uh, small real small and it will hurt our yield net nothing can be done right now but i've seen this insect here out in the fields here with my weekly uh trot, weekly um fields i've walked the other insect that i've seen besides the sink bug has been bee leaf beetle second generation we really had those hot dry conditions for the past two weeks and that is very evident they even went out there attacked the pods as well and that it's going to cause us some issues out there too just like what the stink bug will do uh, and um, so, you know, but with this cool weather we have right now, you know, I do anticipate seeing many uh, bean leaf beetle out there in that. Mm -hmm. The other thing to show here, where I haven't seen too many in this field, there was one here where the, um, the pot itself started to open up and we saw some beans on the ground. All right, for these beans that really had some issues there, the lack of moisture for a period of time, uh, the health of the pot started to deteriorate and it started hitting the ground when you start walk go into your fields and look not so much on the outside go in the inside of the field a little bit just start to see if you see any of the beans land on the ground and if you do that is a sure sign that we need to get in there and start to harvest that field as, as quickly as possible for the most part there'll be other plants that are going to be the beans will drop out of the pods as well in that so you know we've got a crop out here I and mean, it's a good crop we saw some issues in the cornfields um, we need to address that issue and as soon as the ground is fit to uh, go in there and shell we need to go ahead and get those ears uh, shelled and into the bins and so we have a good crop to sell and try to keep everything we can and run it through the machine same thing for soybeans all right this field's not ready to go yet but as soon as it is and that to try to alleviate any shattering issues and that um, to go ahead and get it harvested so that just like corn we put it all through the machine and put it in the bin and to sell later on. So hopefully everybody uh, will take notes, go into the fields, look, plan together, and uh, get it harvested in a safe and timely manner.